Right, I'm going to go through some of the kind of like main things you need to know for your assessment. So if you have a look on your list, it says how to print output text. Probably the basic, the most basic thing you need to know is obviously printing um, brackets, don't forget your speech marks, and then whatever you know, whatever you want in there, whatever string you want to appear. So welcome to my program. Speech marks, brackets. Okay, so you can see it all closes off in exactly the same. So if I run that. Should at the bottom say, hello, welcome to my program. So it just prints exactly what you put inside the speech marks in there. That's number one done. Next thing is asking for uh, how to ask a question and enter some text. So first thing you need to do, you can see we need a variable. We're going to store um, the name. So name seems like a good variable to use. And then I'm going to have name equals, and then I'm going to put my input. So input is what you use um, when you want them to you know, enter something. And in this case, we're going to say, please uh, enter your name. Speech marks, closing brackets again. Okay, so if I run that now, it will just say, well, welcome to my program. Please enter your name like that. Okay. And as you can see, it's still running because I've not entered anything yet. So I just hit enter and it'll finish it. So in terms of how you'd output that now, well, you do the same thing like you did previously, but we need to use the variable. I'm going to make that look a little bit better by putting a space like that in there. So if I wanted to print out the name, all I have to do is reference the variable. So print um, name like that. So if I run that now, so you can see down the bottom there, enter your name, Tony. And you can see it's going to output Tony. Now if I wanted to add a, add a bit more information in that or you know make it a bit more interesting response, I could just say, and uh, let's have a look. So, just put hello, a speech mark, and then I use my comma like that in between my string, which has got the speech marks around it, and the name, um, the variable name, which in this case is just name. So, if I run that now, hopefully, if I put Tony in again, say hello, Tony. There we go. Wonderful. Okay, so that's um, the second one done. Now we're going to ask for a number. Okay, so same again. So we're going to have a variable name, relevant one, age. We're going to store the age equals. So we're assigning it to whatever they type in. But don't forget, because it's got to be a number, int, integer. Um, and then we're going to put input. And then we're going to put another bracket. And then like that there. So you can see, if you look at the basic structure, I've got int, which is for integer, a bracket. And they've got input because this is the question I'm asking them. And then you can see I've got the right number of brackets. I've got one closing there, two closing there. And I just put in here whatever information I'm asking for. So please enter your age like that. And then again, I print out like I did before. All I need to do is print speech marks and the name of the variable like so. So if we run that now, enter your name, okay, Tony. Enter your age, you're going to be 32, I'll turn you there. And you can see, it prints out the age. Um, and then you can put in here, okay, well, it's put um, a speech mark and say, wow, you do not look. Speech mark, comma, like that. So you can see, that's how I put a string into it. This is how I put age. I just put the comma after the string with the variable name, and it should do exactly what I want it to do. So, Tony, please enter your, enter your age. Just go 32 again. Wow, you do not look 32. Wonderful. Okay. So, how to output text and numbers? Well, we've done that particularly on, on over those two um, the last two parts there. So, how to output text and numbers is very much the same as how you'd output. Um, text and strings really because um, we're using the comma so all we need to do is put in the variables um, uh, you know I could put in here again so if I put in I don't know if I put in a name so that is a number age because it's an integer that there is a string but it doesn't really matter because we just put a comma and a comma there let's see if this runs so Tony age again 32 why well, didn't like 32, Tony? There you go. So I've put in variables which contain either a number 
or a string. It doesn't really matter. It works both ways. So how to use an if statement. Um, so what we need to do is uh, come up with a condition. So in this case here, um, it's say if age. So we're going to have a look at the whatever stored in this variable age. If it's greater than, um, what should we say? Um, so 16. Okay, so if age greater than 16, uh, let's print something out. I don't know, just go print, um, um, leave school. Okay, like so. Like that there. So if the age is greater than 16, leave school. Um, the other part of my condition, obviously, the else is going to be everything else, um, which is up to and including 16. Okay, so it's going to say print. Um, go to school like that okay so if I put that in now I'll put Tony in age is going to be 32 again and can say well you don't look 32 Tony leave school so it's looking at that condition so if I run that again um, I'm going to put in someone else let's put Dave good old Dave Dave 16 and you can see it's saying go to school okay so it's looking at the condition there so as long as you've got the right condition so if i change that now equals to so greater than or equals to leave school and if i run that again put the same things in davy age is 16 leave school okay so you can see how that output changes depending upon the operator that i'm using okay so that's quite a lot covered in there you've got your your notes You've got your help tab, tab at the guide in there and your knowledge organizer. So get yourself ready for your assessment next week.